Hey guys, Zexus here, bringing you guys a sword guide today. In this guide, we're going to be going over a basic move overview. We're going to do true combos, strings, and follow-ups, as well as doing a bit of edge guarding and some other stuff like that. If you guys do like this video or it helps you, make sure to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Twitch and Discord links down in the description below. I've been working super hard on those. Uh, but anyway, timestamps are going to be down in the description, and let's get into the guide. Sword Sidelight is going to be a really good approach tool. It has a nice 360 hitbox around it and it's going to cover a great distance making it a really good punish tool as well. It has low variable force allowing for consistent setups for uh, follow ups and strings which is really good. And this move is also very strong to use gravity cancelled because it's going to be able to cover them on the ground as well as most of a jump height. So if the opponent doesn't really have any stage to work with or they're stuck on the edge, this is something I'll do a lot and it's very successful. Uh, this move however is quite punishable on miss so just make sure you keep that in mind. Sword Neutral Light is going to be the fastest move to come out on the sword kit. It has a very short startup frames and it's going to cover quite nicely in front of your character. What this means is when you whiff an attack you're going to be able to cover yourself quite quickly which is really nice, making it so the opponent is going to have a very hard time to punish you. Sword Downlight is a really fast move overall. It has a nice long hitbox that stays close to the ground, and it's going to be a really good approach tool against grounded opponents, as well as being your main punish tool when possible, because it goes into Sword's true combos for easy kills, as well as just maximum damage output. This move is also going to be really good to use Gravity Cancelled. Sword Neutral Air is a really fast and safe move to use. It's going to throw out a rainbow type hitbox above your character and it's going to be an insanely good juggle tool which I'd recommend using a lot especially against floaty opponents. Um, it's also going to hit grounded as long as you're beside the opponent which is really nice. Uh, if you throw it out when you're stacked it won't work. Uh, one other good tool with this uh, move is going to be getting back onto stage. Using it to cover yourself with proper timing, you can protect yourself from a lot of different ground pounds, down airs, and things of the like, so you'll be able to get back onto stage safely. Sword Down Air is a really strong tool as well. It has the same type of hitbox as Sword Neutral Air, except hitting underneath you, and it's going to be a really good string tool to use on grounded opponents. There's a lot of different things you can do out of it. It's really fast, and it's also going to be able to be used off stage quite well obviously, mixing up between a falling down air and a rising down air. Sword side air can be used as a good approach tool, either grounded or in the air, as well as a good punish tool. This move has two swings which is really nice, meaning if you miss the first one, the second one can still cover yourself which is really good. At high percents this is a good kill option as well as a good move to push opponents off stage to set up an edge guard. Sword Recovery is very fast to come out and it's gonna have a hitbox that basically covers your character perfectly. This move is really good at challenging people above you of course and it's also gonna be able to hit stacked and grounded which is really nice. You can also move horizontally as normal during the startup, active and recovery frames of the move which is really good. Uh, this is also a really good kill option on Sword as well. Sword Ground Pound is a pretty strong edge guarding tool with decent force, however it has a very small hitbox as you guys can see there. Uh, one thing that's really nice about this move that you can do is if the opponent is sitting off stage, kinda hugging the wall like this, sharking you or whatever, if you're waiting on stage and then eventually mix up your timing with a dash hop ground pound like that, it can be very hard to react to and you can catch them sleeping. Okay, getting into some of Sword's downlight true combos now, the first one we're going to talk about is going to be downlight into recovery, which is a really good kill option at higher percents, and at low percents it can set up a good juggle. So how this one works, I'll quickly just rewind this so you can see, you're going to hit the downlight, after the downlight you're going to jump towards your opponent, and then throw out your recovery. When you throw out the recovery, you're going to want to go basically straight up. If you keep drifting in, you'll just drop the recovery and you won't kill. So that's something to keep in mind. One other thing about this combo is if you hit the downlight too high, like if you gravity cancel it, you won't want to jump into the recovery because it'll miss. 
So you'll be able to just uh, drift towards them and go for the recovery in that case. Okay, the next downlight true combo is going to be downlight into side air. This is going to be a really useful combo if the opponent is near the edge of the stage to push them off the stage, forcing them to use options to get back so you can set up an easier edge guard. Now, this combo, to do it, if you're newer to sword, I'll quickly go back here just to show. You're going to hit the downlight. You're going to hold in the whole time towards the opponent during your jump, as well as your side air. It's pretty basic and easy to pull off. Uh, something to keep in mind though with this combo, once again, like downlight recovery, if you hit it too high, either hitting the downlight over the edge or doing it gravity cancelled, then you aren't going to want to jump. Now, it's pretty insanely high for downlight into side air, so you don't usually have to worry about this and it's generally going to be a jump uh, side air, but it's something good to note and something to definitely get used to playing around in training mode and figuring out where that area is. Alright, this next one barely gets used, but I'm going to show it anyway. It's going to be downlight into neutral air. It does 24 damage and it can set up juggles. If you do want to learn this one, you're going to go downlight, drift in towards the opponent without jumping, and then you throw out your neutral air. Very basic, very easy. Uh, the reason this one doesn't really get used is because one, at higher percents, it's going to send them too far away to really do anything with that juggle. It's going to be really hard, they have a lot of space to kind of move around and try to get down to the stage. And because Downlight Recovery does the exact same thing, but does an extra 3 damage. Okay, getting into Downlight Down Air now, this is an amazing combo. It sets up for good string potential at low percent, and leads into true combos at higher percent, which I'll be showing next. Uh, when you hit the Downlight, you're going to jump towards the opponent, and then Down Air, basically right after the jump. To do this easier, all you want to do is hold down and in throughout the whole combo. I'll show it uh, slow-mo real quick, but this one's definitely going to take a while at first, but once you get it the first couple times, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Just remember, hold down and in the whole time, and should be pretty easy. Alright, out of down light, down air, gravity cancel, neutral light is going to be true from 120 to 150. This combo is also true from 90 till about 160 with a ledge cancel. The next one is going to be a jump recovery out of downlight down air. It looks like this. It's going to be true at 150 damage plus and it's a kill option which is really good and killing at 150 is nuts. So this is definitely one I would practice just so you can get those early knockouts on sword because sometimes sword struggles to kill until later percents dare into neutral light it looks like that so for this combo you're gonna have to be hitting dare on the ground okay it'll kind of make your character float as you guys can see here and you're gonna have to be throwing it out when you're beside the opponent on the ground during the down air and the recovery frames of the down air you're gonna have to drift in towards the opponent and then throw out your neutral light right away. This combo is going to be true from 0 to 60 damage, and obviously it's very niche, and you have to be in a very specific position to make this work, but if you do hit a dare like this, it is definitely worth knowing. Okay, so the next true combo that isn't with downlight is going to be a side light into end light. Now this one only works at really high percents, like 200 plus damage, but uh, you're going to have to hit the side light stacked, and then you just go straight into the neutral light, it does work as a kill option, as you guys can see, at insanely high percent. But yeah, here we go. We hit the side light like stacked, or they can be behind you a little bit, and then you just go into the neutral light. Nothing too special about this one. Once again, very niche, obviously, with having to have the high percent. But this is a good thing to know how to do anyway, because if you hit the close side light at lower percents, it's still going to be a two dodge frame string, which is really good. If they don't have a dodge, they can't get out of it. And also, it's going to be able to catch dodge ins uh, and down and in as well. On characters 5 dexterity and up, you can hit the second swing of side air into a neutral light as a true combo. To do this, you have to hit the second swing while landing, drift towards your opponent, and then go into your neutral light. Now this is going to work until 70 damage, but the more damage they are, the closer you have to be. And with 9 dex Koji, you can do this with both swings, and it's the same idea. You have to be closer the higher damage they are, but it's going to work until 50 damage. 
The last true combo we're going to talk about is going to be downlight into ground pound. This one's barely used because it's super inconsistent. If you do want to do this one though, you have to hit the downlight stacked, jump in and ground pound right away. It also true combos into gravity cancel neutral light from low till mid percent. Okay, getting into some of Sword's strings now. The first one, if you hit a downlight and they don't have a dodge, you can go into a jump gravity cancel downlight into some sort of finisher for that combo. Uh, you're able to get this with low enough dodge frames, so if they don't have a dodge, they won't be able to get out of it. It looks like this. Every move on the sword kit is able to be used out of down air. Uh, I'm going to show a couple off though. For example, gravity cancel downlight is a really good option because you're going to be able to get really big damage build. Um, depending which way they dodge, you can set yourself up in a different way. For example, if they dodge down and in, I'd go down and be able to get a big old string like that. At about 80 damage on maps such as Enigma, you can also get this to really low frames with a ledge cancel. As you guys can see there, three frames. As the damage builds up too, it's gonna become closer and closer to true. And at a certain point, uh, this combo actually does become true. I know you can hit it at 120, it's just way more consistent at 130. But if you do hit this true, they will be able to DI out of it. So in that case, you would rather go for something like maybe the end light so they don't get out of your combo. Gravity cancel side light is something I like to do out of down light down air a lot as well. I find it covers quite a few different dodges and if you hit the side light close enough, you can go straight into a recovery and get a nice string that way. Doing a second down air can also be a good option. Getting into the side light strings now, if you hit your side light close up, going into a neutral light is a really good option. It's going to be a two dodge frame string, meaning if they don't have a dodge, they can't get out of it, which is really nice. But if you hit your side light from too far away, it's going to knock them too far away for you to go for the neutral light. In this case, if they stay on the ground, you can go for a down light, which would be a pretty good option and be able to rack up quite a bit of damage. If the opponent jumps out of your side light, you can go for a side air to knock them farther off stage. You could go for a recovery, or you can also go for a neutral air. Now, one thing as well, if the opponent is landing and you hit their side light right underneath them, it's not going to really have any force. It's not going to send them anywhere. So if this happens, recovery is a really good option. Down air into recovery is also a really good option out of side light. Okay, we're gonna get into a little bit of edge guarding now. So first thing I wanna talk about is covering the ledge with downlight. So sword downlight is gonna catch people that are getting a little bit too high up on the wall and peeking their head over. So for example, this dusk will misspace his recovery and go up too high and I get the free uh, downlight side air punish. Now, obviously you don't have to go downlight side air. You could go for another downlight dare. Or uh, if you're really feeling risky and you want to risk it for the biscuit, you could also go for a uh, like a downlight ground pound. But obviously that's going to be a lot more risky and needs very particular spacing. Other good options to cover the ledge are going to be a side air if they decide to recover a little higher, as well as neutral light if they stay lower to the ground. Getting into a little bit of the actual offstage play now, if you have the opponent offstage and they're underneath you, mixing up between a rising down air and a falling down air are gonna be your safest and best bets. But if you have them off and they, you can read their movement or read when they're gonna go to the wall, throwing out a ground pound is gonna be a great option to secure an earlier kill. If they decide to recover a little higher, Trying to meet where they are in the air and go for a side air is going to be really good. But one other option as well is going to be a gravity cancel and light. You'll see quite a few people do that and it's definitely a really good option as well. If the opponent's sharking off stage and waiting on the wall and you're on stage, you can wait up here and then mix up your timing and go for a dash hop fast fall ground pound or a dash hop fast fall down air to catch your opponents off guard. Last thing I want to talk about for edge guarding is just going to be gravity cancel downlight. Now gravity cancel downlight can be a good option into down air or side air off stage, but it's going to put you in a really bad position if you miss. Because if you miss, you now have no dodge. The opponent is getting up onto the stage and they're above you. They're going to get all their options back and they can potentially turn this edge guard back around on you. So it's high risk, high reward. Uh, one cool thing with this though, if you go for a gravity cancel downlight facing the stage and you hit them into the wall from a good distance away, so you'll see right there, I'm basically a full downlight away from the wall. It's going to bounce the opponent off of the wall 
So you can jump straight up and go into a ground pound and hit it true basically every time as long as you're at that spacing. Now, if you hit the uh, gravity cancel down light too close, this will happen and you'll just whiff it. It'll hit them off the wall a little too far. So that's just something to keep in mind. A couple characters on sword have a true combo out of sword downlight with a signature. One of these is going to be Koji. On Koji, you can go into a downlight into neutral sig if you hit the downlight close with a bit of forward momentum. It's going to do more damage than recovery and it's going to have more force, meaning it kills earlier. If you hit the downlight from far away, however, this will happen. And there is a workaround for this though. If you hit the downlight from far away, you can do a chase dodge down and in. I'll just back it up so you can see. You hit your downlight, and then right after the downlight, you're going to chase dodge down and in so you get to the ground quickly so you can throw out that neutral sig. Now, this one, uh, you can miss if you hit the downlight too close and go for this option, as you guys can see there. So Val also has one of these true combos with her end sig. It's going to be the same way as Koji's. If you hit it close, you can go for a gravity cancel. And if you hit it far away, you'll go for a chase dodge down and in. Jiro can also do a chase dodge down and in into neutral sig for one dodge frame, which is going to be crazy because that killed from 120 from here. Downlight side air doesn't kill from this spot till 170, so that's a really early kill, and it's something you should definitely be going for if they have no dodge and you're near the edge. Uh, something to keep in mind too is if you are stacked, it will actually be true. Honorable mention to Jala as well. She can also go downlight into uh, chase dodge down and in neutral sig for one dodge frame killing at 120 so definitely a good option to go for if they have no dodge or if you just want to hopefully get an early kill um this is also obviously crazy because downlight recovery doesn't kill until 170 and this works from anywhere on the map if the opponent has burned their dodge, you can go for a gravity cancel down sig out of downlight on Bodvar. This is going to be unjumpable even though it's 3 frames, and if you're near the edge obviously it's going to be a great spike tool and they're not really going to have enough options to get back. That's going to be the end for this sword guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, make sure to comment down below what you learned and what other tutorials or guides you guys would like to see. Make sure to also check out my socials down in the description below and have fun playing sword. Peace.